News with five-time Emmy Award-winning anchor. everybody so I have a pretty interesting topic to talk about today I've had a few people ask me about this over the years I've had a few non truck driver friends also ask me basically uh, the main question is what's the best truck driving job out there you know, that, that can be answered in so many different ways and there are so many different answers for it the best truck driving job out there, in a nutshell, it's what works for you. Because what someone else might enjoy, you might think it's cruel and unusual punishment. It's the same way how some drivers might enjoy the west, some drivers might enjoy the east. You know, it just depends. Some people might enjoy the midwest, some people might enjoy only staying in Texas or maybe Texas, Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, South Carolina, and Oklahoma, and Arizona, and North Dakota, and New Mexico, and California, and Texas, and New York, South Dakota, and Oregon, and Washington, and Michigan, Pittsburgh, and Pennsylvania, but it can't cool for spring break in Montreal, Vancouver, I'm going all over the world. Ah! Everybody has different preferences. So, truck driving jobs, Pretty much, you have two different choices as far as your main classifications. This goes across the board. You're either a local driver, actually there's three really, local driver, over the road, or regional. You know, regional people usually travel within a few states, but they always get home usually, you know, once a week or a few times per week. Over the road drivers can be out for two weeks, and above. They could be out for up to even six months to a year if they really want to. Local drivers are home every single night. I used to be a local driver for several years in the southeast. I used to think local drivers were the best, you know, as far as they have the best quality of life and everything is just great. But that's not necessarily the case. When you're a local driver, you still have to get up, get ready, eat your breakfast, do whatever you have to do. Then you have to drive into work. Then when you get to work, you could be working 12 hours, 13 hours, 14 hours. And then when, you get, when you're all finished, you have to make it back and then go and get in your car and then drive back home. Sometimes you barely have enough time to get home, eat, shower, and sleep. That's as a local driver. You know, a lot of local drivers will do a lot of unloading. You know, they're actually unloading the truck themselves. I didn't do that, you know, I I drove full-size uh, 53 foot trailers. That guy uh, gave the high beams to me to let me through. I'm going to give him the hazard lights here to thank him. So a lot of local drivers do a lot more manual labor. Not all of them, but in general that seems to be the consensus. Over the road drivers, that's what I'm doing right now, I think it's the best as far as being able to save up money and have no expenses. Because I currently have no expenses. And when you think about it, a local driver, even if he makes the same amount as an over the road driver, let's just say they make the same amount, right? If you find a local job that pays the same amount, 
you still have to pay for the gas in your car, the insurance, utilities, your house payment, rent or whatever, you know, maybe a car payment, you know, all those other things that are associated with it. Then your quality of life is higher, so you're having to, uh, is he pulling over? Okay, come on, turn your hazard lights on, man. Don't just pull over. Come on, man. Uh, he, he moved over for me. That was nice of him. See, that's what I was talking about before. It's a brotherhood out here. He knew that I was going to have to move over. So he moved over all the way into the left lane so that I could get through. That was nice of him to do that. He didn't have to. I was ready to slow down and then move over behind him. But that is a true professional right there. So even if as a local driver you make the same amount of money, really you're not because your quality of life is a bit higher. Now, some can argue that because a lot of local drivers don't get good sleep because they work those long hours, they get back, they barely have enough time to even wash their butts. So, I mean, they're, they're really working themselves to death in some cases. Now, I know I'm about to get some local driver in my comment section saying, I'm, I have a great quality of life and I only work 10 hours a day and I, I'm off three days in a row. I'm not talking about those exceptions. I'm talking about most local drivers out there are working themselves to death in some cases. They're, they're working really hard, long hours, they're working all the time. I know, I've, I've been there. Now, over the road drivers, the other uh, positive thing is you don't have to do as much unloading. You know, typically, you don't have to do any unloading at all. With this company, I've not once had to do any kind of unloading or loading of the trailer. I don't like that, you know. I've, I just wouldn't uh, go someplace that does that. You know, I just, I just drive. I'm a driver. That's my job description. I make sure my truck is good to go. I get this truck into some tight places sometimes. Now, why is this guy going 47 miles an hour? He's going to the left lane here. That, that guy just deserves a round of applause for being an absolute... He's on his phone, of course. I wish I could... I wish... Oh, I, I have not even... He's on his phone. He had it up in the air like that. I'm not sure if it's gonna show up in the video camera, but he had it up like this, like a complete. beautiful thing about this truck you know it, it lets you know exactly the speed now it's pretty common sense when someone's going slow on the road that you need to pass them but it's really nice to know exactly what speed people are going it helps you decide you know it's just another tool at your disposal so on to what we were talking about the best truck driving job I've laid out the three main categories there. Now, subcategories, you've got your dry van, you've got your tankers, tankers that haul fuel or they haul milk or anything liquid. You have them, you have the car haulers, you have the flatbedders, and then you have the reefer units. Now another little category among the flatbedders are the oversized loads. That's a totally different category altogether. 
a lot of respect for what they do. That That is a very tough job. But all of these jobs here, truck drivers out here do all of these. If you talk to a flatbedder, he'll tell you his job is better than reefer, it's better than dry van, it's better than car haulers. If you talk to a car hauler, he'll tell you he loves his job more than the people who do dry van or reefer or any of the above, vice versa. Now, I haul dry van. I think this is the best because I don't have to worry about anything. They put everything inside the trailer and I don't have to worry about it. Now you could say the same thing with the reefer divisions, but you still have to worry about it because you have to keep an eye on your reefer unit back there. That's one extra thing that can go wrong. You also have to fill it up with fuel, you know, whenever you stop, make sure the fuel is topped off. There are times, and I used to haul reefer, there are times when it just goes bad and that can cost you time and money. Plus, hauling those uh, food products, a lot of times you go to some of these warehouses early in the morning or during some weird delivery times and pickup times. I don't like it. I don't like food warehouses in general, but I definitely don't like the refrigerated uh, portions of them. So for me, they can keep that. I think dry van is the easiest. You know, you don't have to do anything. They put everything into there. You drive it, you know, you pick it up from point A, drop it off at point B, and you go off to your next place and start all over again. The best truck driving job, that can be a subjective statement right there because it just depends on the person, what your preferences are. I would say for a new driver, start off with dry van because you don't have to stress about your load being unsecured with, you know, for example, flatbeds. I saw a flatbed driver the other day with a piece of pole that was sticking off. He was at a truck stop parked. The pole was sticking out about six feet. All the other poles were in place, but that one pole went out. Now, I've never done flatbedding, so I'm not exactly sure how they should be strapping them or chaining them down but I know that guy goofed up and if that pole would have went out and killed somebody the court would take that truck driver they would lift the jail up they would throw him in there put the jail on top of him and throw that key away especially if he killed the family because of that idiocy right there So in my opinion, dry van is the easiest one to do, but there's nothing wrong with any of the others. Oh, going back down to 50. It seems like I keep going up and down as far as speed goes. It's starting to get on my nerves. Better start slowing it down here. So it depends on what do you want to do. What is your preference? There is no best truck driving job. It's what works best for you. Same with trucks. What kind of truck works for you and your driving style? Some people like automatic, some people like manual. Some people like old trucks, some people like new trucks. Ah, 50 miles an hour again. We keep doing this every 10 miles. Driving me nuts. Anyway, I'll catch you guys next time. Have a good weekend and we'll see you next week.
280. Hey, we're not leaving till this ends. Excuse me, sir. I think you're sitting in my favorite seat. Come on, get it. Come on, man. It's how many push-ups you want to do here, pal? You know. You boys are gonna pay for that. Oh, come on, man. You hit that guy. He shouldn't have been standing there. Poor little guy. 